I love high proof stuff, but I normally don't use it in a whiskey and Coke. I normally go for that hundred proof and below. Today, I don't know, we'll see. Can cash stream whiskey and Coke together? Hello, hello. My name is Pedro Wolf. I am an Agave Spirits writer for BottleRaiders.com, and today I am joined by my co-host. How's it going, everyone? Kanan here, also known as Whiskier on YouTube, and I also work for Bottle Raiders, except I make video content. Welcome to Spirit of the Spirits. What episode? Are this five now? I believe this is number five. Wow. Five already. It's been fun. Yeah, they're flying by. Today, we have a pretty fun idea going. Everyone loves a little bit of Coke in their cocktail, Coca-Cola, of course. And today, we're going to explore all the many variations that can take. So I'll be trying it out with various tequilas. And I think Kanan maybe has some whiskeys on his hand that will be blending very tastefully with his Coca-Cola. Yeah. So I, I can grab Coca-Cola. I actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try with Dr. Pepper Zero uh -huh. Sugar today. Yeah. I love this stuff, Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar, and I had Diet Coke, but I was like, you know what? I feel like, so I, I put a little twist on it too. I actually picked all my barrel strength and cash ring products. We have like a uh, JT Mellick store pick. This one comes in at 123 proof. We have this Jack Daniels uh, single barrel barrel proof rye that's 135 proof. We have a Stag Junior. I know some people are going to 130 proof, 132 proof, and 118, I believe. Uh, 116 for the Still Austin. So all cash ring stuff. I wanted to see what that's like with some soda. Wow. So we're talking gourmet cocktails today. The best of the best. Yeah. I, I would say probably a lot of people um, would be disappointed that I'm mixing a few of these for sure. And I mean, it is what it is, though. I, I have so much whiskey behind me that sometimes it's fun to, to mix it up and try something new than just drinking it neat, you know? Love to hear it. On my end, yeah. I have some El Tesoro Reposado tequila, Cascanes Blanco, and Aret Blanco. So a sort of spread of tequilas that are usually used. I would say a uh, a well tequila Blanco, a high-end tequila Blanco, and then a very good tequila Reposado, which you rarely see in Coca-Cola cocktails, but I'm interested to experiment with the possibilities. You know, real quick too, I'm, I'm curious, why don't you see repos or añejos used in, because whiskey is really dark spirit, um, it's aged just like a repo and an añejo are, why aren't those using um, Coca-Cola cocktails that much? It's a good question, and it's the main reason that I brought in El Tesoro Reposado today, just to see what it's like. You know, when we're talking agave flavor, which is what you're mm -hmm. looking for in a lot of these tequila cocktails, oftentimes the Blanco just makes the most sense. And I think at a lot of bars, when we're talking like a standard, reliable, like workhorse tequila, they're oftentimes reaching for the Blanco, which is, you know, if done well, can cost 30, 40 bucks um, and fill up yeah. the whole bar for the night. Yeah. And that that's actually very valid. But so with your cocktails, are you, um, I call them cocktails. Let's it's whiskey Cokes, tequila Cokes, right? Yeah. Um, are you squeezing any lime or anything like, like, is that what the norm Ugh. is when people make a tequila and Coke? I'll be honest. I meant to grab a lime on the way over here. And I tried, I tried three different fruit stands in downtown New York city and none uh -oh. of them had limes. I've, I've never, really? where I live, there's limes aplenty at the fruit stand, uh, down here in the thirties and forties of Manhattan. Um, they were talking mangoes avocados papayas even but no limes wow. i was uh, kind of astounded by this that is a little disappointing man <laughs> but um i, I asked that because actually one of my favorite things to do is when i'm mixing a whiskey coke dr pepper any 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 of those dark sodas i actually squeeze a lemon wedge or lime if i can't find or don't have lemon wedges at the house squeeze a full lemon wedge drop it into the um to the cup and it, it's it's wonderful it makes makes it so much more refreshing than just the typical whiskey coke that we're all used to fair enough yeah i mean the, the lime lore goes deep for the tequila and coke and i think that's yeah. really one of the main things i'll be talking about today is that this uh, particular rendition called uh, la batanga which is coca-cola lime tequila and a salt rim mm -hmm. is uh is really iconic right? when people talk about like you know the margarita the paloma the ranch water oftentimes they're talking about the matanga now as well um mm. it was invented at this bar in the town of tequila called uh, la capilla i believe in the 1960s and the bartender who makes it would pour in el tequileno blanco lime 
Coca-Cola. And then the secret addition, the twist, the, uh, the folklore, as it were, is that he uses the knife that he used to cut the lime to stir the cocktail, which in theory adds a certain uh, je ne sais quoi to the experience. Uh. A little bit of lime pulp, a little bit of flavor, and it brings it all together. Oh, okay. Well, that is super interesting. Yeah, let's dude, let's get right into it. I'm super excited, and you know, and maybe some of the listeners, I love high-proof stuff, but I normally don't use it in a whiskey and Coke. I normally go for that 100-proof and below. So today, I don't know. We'll see. Can cash stream? whiskey and coke together can, can it let's make it happen let's do it i don't have ice in my cups man i'm sure you probably don't over there either but um the sodas are cold so that's that's a plus now when you're reaching for a soda to mix up your coke and whiskey is it often dr pepper are you a uh, dr pepper fan yeah it's 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 dr pepper or coke zero i mean you can you can use regular dr pepper you can use regular coca-cola i just find like kind of doesn't matter you're just getting unnecessary sugar at that point when you're mixing it um with whiskey uh so why not go for the the zero sugar products but i've really been digging the the dr pepper because of the it's a little bit sweeter um than coke i find so it, it pairs really nice with a good whiskey a sweeter whiskey um it's really good very nice and now you just poured up some still austin if i'm not mistaken i, I see those bottles i love the labels can you tell me a bit about the brands i don't know too much about them yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, Still Austin, out of Austin, uh, Texas here. Still Austin has a very good master blender, and her name, don't want to butcher, but I know it's Nancy, maybe Freely. I know the first name's Nancy, so they were super pumped to get her as their master blender. Um, this one in particular is the Bottle of the Month from Whiskey Raiders, from Bottle Raiders. This is the single barrel uh, club membership, and this was, I think... Three months ago uh, was the Still Austin single barrel pick. And Still Austin's just making some fantastic stuff. They do a red corn, a blue corn release. Um, I think that they come out like every so often throughout the year. But Still Austin really is making some of my favorite whiskey in the South. Um, Stag Jr., of course, a lot of people may know it. Um, but for those of you that don't, this is made by Buffalo Trace. It is the same mash bill as Buffalo Trace, except this is aged for way longer. Cash strength. It, it, it is phenomenal. It's one of my favorite whiskeys in the world, especially at the price tag of like $65 or less, if you can find it. I know it's very hard. Um, this is a store pick from Southern Spirits in the South Carolina area. And this is a 135 proof. Everybody knows Jack Daniels. A lot of people don't know they're actually producing like some of the best high proof whiskey right now. Rye and I don't want to call it bourbon, but Tennessee whiskey. JT Mellick um, out of Louisiana, 100% rice whiskey. So I am very, very curious to see how this pairs with um, a Coke pro a Dr. Pepper. That's what I'm using today. I'm very curious to see what that is. And then last but not least, uh, Art of the Spirits out of Colorado Springs. Um, this is the originals label. So this guy does a lot for military members, gives back to the military community and puts us on his label. So that's what I got. Very cool. And you're just pouring up each of them be, uh, behind the bottles, get a little sampling of each. Yeah. 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 I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and pour them up and then, yeah, my, why not? I'll just pour coat, uh, the Dr. Pepper and every single one of them and then just kind of go back to back and. If you want, if you got one poured up, I'd love to hear about it. Oh, I sure do. And I'm, I'm curious, you know, I was thinking about this before we shot our episode. I can't think of any other cocktail where the name brand is right there in the title. Jack and Coke, two name brands. You know, when we order a margarita at the bar, we're not ordering Jose Cuervo and Lime. And, you know, I, I think that for a brand to have reached such a ubiquitous level in the culture that everyone just calls it Jack and Coke. Even now as we're filming this, right? We're sort of slurring our words a bit to say Jack yeah. and Coke as, as opposed to, uh, you know, Dr. Pepper and, uh, you know, something else. So it's, it's, it's pretty wild. I don't know if there's some origin to that, maybe a uh, really successful PR campaign. I can only imagine. I, dude, it's a very, very iconic drink. Um, I don't even know if it's considered a cocktail. Uh, I just call it a mixed drink at this point. But seriously, you, I'm glad you point, pointed that out. I was kind of slurring my words, kept saying Coke, Coke, Coke. Even though I'm using Dr. Pepper, it's just that iconic. And, I mean, dude, I think even still when people are like it, – it's weird to even say I, I'm going to do a whiskey and Coke. No, like you're just going to say I'm going to get a Jack and Coke, but can I get Buffalo Trace with it instead? 
I feel like that's how people order it too. It's crazy. Wild. So first up, I have a little bit of Aret Blanco mixed with my Coke. Uh, for those that don't know, Aret, you know, we talk about a workhorse spirit. This usually means that's something that uh, costs, you know, under 30, 20 bucks. Um, it's very reliable. This is a literal workhorse spirit and that it has a horse on the front of the label. I believe a homage to the horse that would pull the, um, uh, the Tahona, which is a um, giant stone wheel used to crush agaves in Mexico. This is a bottle that costs about 20 bucks. It's not as widely available in the United States as it is in Mexico, but for under 30, 40 bucks, this is probably one of the best Blanco tequilas you could buy. 100% agave, additive free, just uh, fantastic stuff on a very, very understandable budget. I do really love that bottle um, and, uh, and everything that they're making as a whole so i do have a question too um on the topic i know you said it was uh more available in mexico what are the people making tequila or the people that live in mexico what is their like go to this is our bottle this is it because i know it's probably not the typical jose cuervo or casamigos that a lot of uh, people love here for i don't know what reason but what is it over there do you know like that the most popular brand it's a good question. There are certain brands that are more um, U.S. facing and then certain brands that are more Mexico facing. Around Mexico, you do see a lot of Jose Cuervo products, actually. Um, Jose Cuervo is owned by Beckley, which is fronted by the uh, the Beckman family. The Beckman family owns 1800 Tequila, Grand Centenario, um, Kevin Hart's Grand Coromino. I, I think you'd probably be hard pressed to find Gran Coromino in, in Mexico, but around the town of Tequila, you'll see tons and tons of Beckman owned products. Um, on the higher end, you'll see, you know, we in America love our Fortaleza Tequila. Uh, yeah. South of the border is called Los Abuelos. I believe they couldn't call it Los Abuelos in the United States because of a different brand called uh, Ron de Abuelo, which is a rum brand. Um, so if you're looking in Mexico for really great tequila, you'll find something called Los Abuelos, which is the same juice that we have in the United States. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to that. You. Let's see the color on that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, sort of Coke colored, maybe. A little bit. Hmm. And that's Ooh, your, that uh, you're still good. Austin? You didn't yeah, like that it? That was not good. Mm -mm. No. It's weird. I don't know if it's just interacting with the Dr. Pepper in a re uh, weird way, but it's giving me like this weird weird mineral taste i don't know huh and that's the still austin mm -hmm. interesting i guess and what, what's the proof on that 116 yeah it might be hard for a, a zero sugar soda to uh hold up to that proof no um yes yes and i think um without the ice it's also gonna hurt it a little bit but they all have that disadvantage all these whiskeys had the disadvantage of not having ice today um, and I also am just realizing this is the only non-single barrel product uh, on the table. So I am I am most excited about the stack because, again, that is my favorite whiskey. But overall, so far, I'm going to rate this. Uh, I'm going to do like a scale 1 to 10. I'm going to give this a 3. Seriously, like, dead even 3. Not that great. What about well, you? What are you ranking this one so far? Well, I'll ask you first. What would you rate the Still Austin outside of the coke right just so people have an idea of the uh, the spectrum gotcha of the difference. gotcha um and again this is a single barrel in particular i do know this single barrel wasn't my favorite their regular cash shrink lineup is for the price uh probably 7.2 hmm. okay fair enough i would yeah. say that this aret and coke i would i would give this a seven i mean if i go to the bar and i order Two. this um i would be very happy the agave flavor comes through loud and clear mixes well with the coke you know sometimes there's a uh you know sort of a spectrum of likability with these things if you use a really really high-end spirit sometimes it just doesn't quite gel with what you know of that spirit right you have the flavor but it's a little diluted others time other times you're just going to get you know the best possible coca-cola and spirits cocktail imaginable so it's interesting to see where you'll fall today yeah 
Man, I, I just on the topic, I'm not even using Coca-Cola, but I can't stop thinking about it and I see your label right there. Um, they make some of the best dang commercials, can I just say? Like, they're marketing. They're one of the largest companies in the world. Yeah. Coca-Cola. I mean, I, everyone knows that it's an iconic brand. You know? I was reading on the way over here that supposedly, by some poll, I, I forget from where, um, that <laughs> Coca-Cola is the second most recognized word in the world behind okay and and talk about a crazy origin story i mean when coca-cola was invented in the the 1880s it had cocaine leaf in it which they took yes. out in like the early 1910s which is wild 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 i would like to try it Just, the old coca-cola why not you know and then i see some shops um still make it the old way so they'll take a coca-cola glass pump some the real og coca-cola mm. syrup into it and then they carbonate it with like um i guess a, like a, like what we use fountain drinks today but it's just like that carbonated water and it interacts really um with the syrup and that's how, how some of these places are making coca-colas it's weird that's wild it, you know few people know that to this day coca-cola um there's this uh processing plant out in new jersey about 10 miles from new york city that imports uh decoconized cocaine leaves from south america which are still used in the co uh, the coca-cola recipe today uh so it's mm. the the flavor minus the uh the bite as it were so were they using it for flavor or were they using it for that bite i mean i think back in the you know 1885 when it was first invented i think it was a uh, you know it was the uh, the original four loco i mean imagine you uh, you go to the <laughs> bar and you order your uh, your coca-cola and and jack daniels i mean you're you're uh, having a hell of a night for sure dude yeah, people were getting lit back in the day on some Coca-Cola. Um, Art of the Spirits. This is a 12-year, 132-proof pick, and I believe the store was Clicks over in Colorado Springs. I was able to get this bottle before I moved. This is so good. And, and this bottle is a killer bottle um, by itself, and I think it was like 70 bucks for a 12-year-old age-dated product, 132-proof. Like That's a fantastic price, but with the Coke, it the, it's already such a sweet whiskey with the dr pepper see there we go i see i keep seeing it in the corner of my eye. i'm gonna keep calling it the coke anyway guys just so you know i'll, I'll just there we go <laughs> <laughs> um no yeah seriously though this is super super sweet and uh pairs really nice with this dr pepper um some of that cherry note i guess that comes with dr pepper because i think it is like a cherry cola i'm not sure but i definitely taste cherry in this and that could be the whiskey or it could be the soda who knows there you go I'm pouring up some El Tesoro Reposado with my Coca-Cola. Man, I already, I already feel it in the, you know, it's warm. This is some, some warm pours right here, so I can already feel that proof. It's nice. How are you liking that one? El Tesoro. I love it. I'm serious. I really, really love it. Um, it, it would be hard for me to make this every day, though, just because it's, such a good bottle like it's one that you're sipping neat on the rocks not really mixing um however you know most people aren't mixing it so i thought let's let's mix this stuff and see what it actually tastes like because everybody's curious i'm sure everybody wants to know damn i bet stag's really really good in a coke but i'm not trying it well we are today <laughs> fair enough so i got is this, this uh... the repo this is the Repo. This is El Tesoro. Oh, yeah. Fantastic brand. I think El Tesoro deserves to be recognized alongside the likes of, you know, the Fortalezas, Tequila Ochos. Fantastic brand. Um, you know, I mentioned the Tajona before. Every bottle of El Tesoro has this topper that looks mm -hmm. like the Tajona. So down at the distillery in uh, Mexico, yeah. this would be maybe uh, 50 times the size. A giant stone wheel. It gets rotated in a circle to crush the agaves, uh, bringing out all that wonderful vegetal flavor that tequila enthusiasts are looking for and the good stuff. Now, does every um, tequila maker have one? Is that still the tradition to use or is there new methods that are more effective than a big stone? It's the definitely the traditional method. Uh, controversially, most tequila makers don't use it. The vast majority. I mean, if you're using a Tajona, then you're in a sort of a 5% upper echelon of brands that are uh, doing it the quote-unquote right way. There's also something called a roller mill, which is a slightly more industrialized method. And then there's the infamous diffuser, uh, which sort of uh, vaporizes the agaves and yeah. sucks all the juices out of them. Uh, the word diffuser is often used as a sort of boogeyman for tequila enthusiasts. If your brand uses a diffuser, chances are people are not going to like it who are sort of the, uh, the mustache twiddling, uh, you know, sort. So, you know, we'll, we'll <laughs> yeah. see. Okay. Oh, yeah. 
I'm 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 really enjoying this. What a good topic. How is your uh, your combination of going over there? Ah oh, man, I'm just digging it. I'm ready to keep going, moving on to the next one. But I think I'm I'm definitely not finishing this still, Austin. I think I'm gonna finish this whole thing before I move on to the next right. one. I love it. I really do. What's your rating oh. on that one? Good question. Thank you. So on the whiskey itself, before it's mixed, um, this one easily gets an eight point nine out of ten. Like it's one of those for the for the price, everything. Um with it in the soda, I would say it, it remains an 8.9. It's really, really good. It, there's really mm -hmm. nothing changing with this. I'm still getting a lot of those uh, flavor profiles that I would if I were sipping a neat, except now I just had that carbonation um, and a little bit of added sweetness from the soda. So I still rate this exactly what it would be um, before a cocktail. Very nice. Now, I would rate the El Tesoro, I guess if we're going for the points in addition to just the 1 out of 10, I would probably rate El Tesoro Reposado 7.5, maybe 8. Really good tequila, not too expensive. Um, with the Coke, I think I do understand why Reposados aren't always used for these sort of 50-50 uh, gotcha. cocktails. It, it's tasty, but I think that the, um, the little bit of age from the Reposado just doesn't quite pair well with the coca-cola mm -hmm. i think when you're talking a whiskey where there's that big oak note big cherry note it brings out those sort of like smaller notes yeah. the coca-cola the cherry notes that exist within the coca-cola to begin with um reposados lean more you know subtly sweet a little bit of a nuance there um which is kind of lost in the coca-cola mm -hmm. if i might say so myself i would probably rate this combination a five out of ten oof so it does hurt it a little bit because it's aged, is what you a think. A little bit, but it's tasty. Mm. You know, I should have brought an Añejo to the studio today, uh, aged, you know, between one to three years, or maybe even an extra Añejo. I think that would be uh, sort of blasphemous to the tequila. Um, but, you know, we're down to experiment. <laughs> I have a um, Corazon finishing William LaRue for 26 months, so over two years. Wow. I might have to try that. Ah, good idea. Now, if if I'm not mistaken, you, you did a video once trying uh, Blanton's with different sodas, right? I did. We did a full long form video where we got a bunch. I'm talking like Mountain Dew Voltage. We did, I don't know if we did Code Red, but regular Mountain Dew, Diet Coke, Coke Zero, like all kinds of different sodas, different brands. Um, and we fresh cracked the bottle of Blanton's and mix it all together. Uh... It was one of those like... Not to troll your videos, but it's also one of those things where it's like, who cares? It's just whiskey. And that one is a whiskey that everybody cares about. Everybody talks about Blanton's. Um, and they, they treat it like it's the most special whiskey in the world. So I was like, you know what? Let's let's just buy a fresh bottle and let's mix it with a bunch of Coca-Cola and piss people off or give people a good laugh. You know, that's what it was. <laughs> Do people mix spirits with Mountain Dew? I can't say I've ever heard of the, uh, you know, the no. boundary pushing Mountain Dew cocktail. Did we were not fans from what I remember. I think it was very medicinal, especially like the Baja Blast or Baja. Is it Mountain Dew Baja Blast? Yeah. The Mountain Dew Baja Blast was like, it gave it the super medicinal taste and it was not good. But that was the cool thing too, is from that video, we actually realized, hold on. There's a lot of soda brands out there that actually pair well with whiskey other than just Coke um, and Dr. Pepper that people are used to using. Uh, believe it or not. With Blanton's and, and a lighter, I would say like 95 proof or below, Sprite pairs amazing with a sweeter whiskey. Amazing. Like better than Coca-Cola. Interesting. You know, in the uh, the European market, they have a pre-mixed Sprite and Absolute Vodka product now as well. Um, and over here, yeah. we have Hard Mountain Dew, which is made with a uh, malted base, yeah. which is uh, – not my cup of tea, but to all the Dude. Mountain Dew uh, diehards out there, totally respect your decision to drink that. <laughs> well, I had that. I've, I've had the Mountain Dew um, hard seltzer or whatever they're called, hard Mountain Dews. They don't taste like regular Mountain Dew. Like the, the, the flavor profile I'm used to on a Mountain Dew, I was not getting on those. And I was just like, this just tastes like flavored alcohol. You know, like, I don't know. It wasn't great. Yeah, the mix can be pretty wild sometimes. I mean, you know, last episode we talked about, uh, you know, how crazy, you know, the ready to drink premix cocktail space is getting. And sometimes the crossovers just don't make sense. Like to imagine what a Mountain Dew tastes like crossed over with a beer, which is essentially what it is, right? It's a, it's a yeah. malt based alcohol, you know, malt, Mountain Dew mixed with beer. It, it just doesn't 
it just doesn't make sense. I, no. I think for that product to come to market, they have to do a lot of tinkering behind the scenes that just, uh, it doesn't add up with the formula. And, you know, yeah. on a side note, uh, a few months back, I tried um, Dunkin' Spiked. So these are, Dunkin' Donuts has a oh. RTD line now. They come in no four way. coffee flavors and four iced tea flavors. Um, and, you know, no offense to Dunkin' Donuts, no offense to, you know, people in Massachusetts who love Dunkin' Donuts, uh, but these are probably the worst ready to drink cocktails I've ever had. Um, maybe ready to drink cocktails Cocktails is a strong phrase. They are a malt-based Dunkin' coffee. Um, the, the the combination just did not oh. make sense. And I, I haven't tried. I mean, I've tried one of the hard Mountain Dew flavors, but uh, yeah. I think for for my money, the Dunkin' spiked is probably the worst combination of uh, those very very different vibes. That Sunny D from last episode was up there for me as well. Definitely. Yeah, but people like them. I think uh, I know you know even do. even since we shot that episode, I've talked to a few people who are like, "Sunny D vodka seltzer? You didn't like it? What's going on with yeah, you? What's wrong?" I don't. And look, I have a buddy that I, he probably watches, but we we were stationed in the military together. This guy for years has been drinking Sunny D and Pinnacle whipped vodka together. That was his thing. It's like a screwdriver, you know. I've had screwdrivers where it's orange juice and vodka. They're mm. great. But his thing was Sunny D, in particular, Pinnacle Whip. So when the Sunny D seltzers came out, he was deployed, and this guy almost lost his mind. He was so bummed that he wasn't here to try them when they came out. <laughs> Pinnacle. Now, that's a, a whipped cream-flavored vodka? Yeah, yeah. With huh. the Sunny D. It, he, it was like a creamsicle, dude. He, yeah, that's lie, what I was going to say. Really good. Yeah, it was really, really good. That's wild. Yeah, you know, uh, on another side note, I know a few months back, a brand, I forget what it was, but they did a creamsicle-flavored hard soda. And then I know also Rocket Pop recently released a uh, Rocket Pop Twisted Tea. I, I'm just like, you know, spouting off names here. But the, but really the crossovers are, uh, you know, endless. And as we're sitting here mixing up these different things that maybe shouldn't be mixed in the uh, most ideal of circumstances, uh, you know, it's just interesting to understand uh, really what people are drinking across the country. Yeah. Let me just say, I, I got chills a little second ago. Um, <laughs> smelling this stag in here it's phenomenal it smells like cotton candy the fr you know the ones that you literally can make yourself and you swirl it around and there's cotton candy that forms on the you know what i'm talking about pedro sure thing you've seen that before yeah i've seen it that's what that smells like it smells just like cotton candy and tasting it that tasting it was so nice because there's no way in my mind there's no way that there's a 130 proof whiskey right now in this glass. There's just no way. And uh, the finish, like after, which is so crazy. You're not supposed to have a finish after a whiskey and Coke. But I think because it's cash green, it hits you in the back end. Um, it tastes like cotton candy. This, okay, I'm gonna, and I'm going to be honest with the people. For the price, for my love of this whiskey, it is one of my favorites of all time when people ask me, this is always my answer. Um, I'd have to rate this mm, a 10. A 10 out of 10 for me and my palate, the regular whiskey. Put in this glass. You can't go higher than a 10, but it doesn't get worse after you mix it with Dr. Pepper. So I'm going to keep it at a 10 as well. This this is just so good. I love this. Huh. You know, I know the stag love goes deep on your end. Can, can you tell me why you love this brand so much? Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to sound like uh, in the whiskey world, we call them taters. Have you ever heard that term before? <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A whiskey tater, everybody's like, oh, Buffalo Trace makes the best whiskey in the world. Well, you know, there's a reason that the stuff is hard to get, and there's a reason that other people compare their stuff to Buffalo Trace. Try this instead of this, right? Because they, I, I do think they are the best. But I guess at the end of the day, even just standard, regular Buffalo Trace Regular Weller, regular old Blantons, you know, they only use a few different, three different mash bills. They have mash bill one, mash bill two, a rye uh, mash bill that they use in their whiskey. But what's crazy to me, this is the same, it's literally the same exact whiskey as Buffalo Trace. According to them, it's the same exact mash bill. However, it's just aged in different warehouse. It's aged longer. And instead of proofing it down to 90 proof, which Buffalo Trace is, they cash strength it. So they like you're getting cash strength Buffalo Trace age rumored to be like 
seven to 14 years is what this is. It's mm. just incredible. And it's one of those whiskeys that um, no matter what the proof is, it's probably not going to sip at that high proof. So cash ring, it's going to, it's not going to burn your palate at all. You get, you get that nice warm feeling in your chest when you drink this and the finish lingers. And you know what the best part about it is, Pedro? What's the best part? If, if you can find it, it's $57. That's unreal for what this is. Unreal. Huh. What are the, uh, the higher ends of stag reach into, right? I know there's like, I'm sure an upper echelon of prices, right? Yes. Um, I've seen as I mean in New York City, <laughs> yeah. I've seen three fifty, three hundred fifty dollars mm. um, is what you can buy it for today. If I really wanted one, the least I'd be able to find it for is probably one hundred fifty dollars. Like if I if I texted someone right now this second said, "Hey, I need one for tonight," it'd be probably the cheapest would be one hundred fifty dollars. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's definitely climbed down in price. They're getting a little bit more available now. They're producing a little bit more. Um, and normally that, that would, uh, I guess, scare me a little bit. I'm thinking, woo, they're producing more. That means quality is going to go down. Not the case. Every recent batch that I've had has been still consistent and great. And they batch these as well, which is even cooler. So this is a uh, 22B. So this came out in the year two, uh, 2022. Every year they come out with a few batches. So they do small batches. They're... I don't know. Let's say I, I'm just throwing out a random number, guys. Please don't fact check me. But let's say Buffalo Trace. When they're making Buffalo Trace, the standard, they're probably uh, 50,000 barrels, dumping them, proofing them down to 90 proof. This is Buffalo Trace. With Stag, they might be using 10,000 barrels for one batch. You know what I mean? So smaller batch and they batch them. Yeah. Every, I think they release like two to three per year, two to three batches. Hmm. Very nice. I'm going to go grab mm -hmm. my Cascanes Blanco. That's going to be a good one. That is going to be a good one. What's the MSRP on Cascanes Blanco nowadays? Mm, this is the number seven. So this is their lowest proof offering, 40% uh, ABV. I believe yeah. you could get it for 80 to $90 around mm. uh, New York City, maybe. You know, this is a this is kind of starting to become a bit of a unicorn bottle, uh, sort of achieving that really? uh, Fortaleza status. I think they're just, they're getting bought up pretty quickly. And they do limited bottlings, um, particular, particularly their Rosa bottling, which they finish in uh, red wine casks. They'll sell out yeah. really, really, really quickly. You know, they're sort of taking the, uh, the limited edition approach. Um, I don't see too many liquor stores with Cascanes. I think that's sort of a, on the more high end uh, of the spectrum. Um, but I think this bottle would cost around 70 bucks at the uh, the average spot. Wow. That is, you know, for 80 proof, that is a little high. I always thought that. But I say that until I tried it. It is really, really good. And that is up there with the Fortaleza, for sure. Um, I love Fortaleza, but I think that the Cascanes is one that I always am telling people, like, look, you got to try this. If you're looking for Fortaleza, if you love Fortaleza, please try Cascanes, too. Because I feel like a lot of people, you might have seen it, too, actually transition from Fortaleza to Cascanes. Like, some people actually like that profile a little more, and they know that, oh, I can walk into some stores today and actually get it if I wanted it. Totally agreed. Yeah, I mean, I think that the, you know, not that the Fortaleza hype has subsided in any way, but it's just made it unattainable for the vast majority of consumers. Yeah. Um, and, you know, brands like Cascanes, uh, Tequila Ocho, G4, um, El Tesoro are offering, you know, fantastic products, arguably just as good, sometimes better than Fortaleza. Um, <laughs> and you can just find them everywhere. So there's, there's no reason not to uh, get those products. Now, the hype of Fortaleza, was it an influencer? Was it a YouTube-driven thing that now blew that company up? What was it? Some would say so. When we had uh, Sean, the NYC uh, spirits guru, in on our first episode, yeah. he believed that it was influencers. Um, you know, there's a sort of small group of, uh, you know, very influential uh, folk on YouTube and Instagram who hold a lot of sway over what people are drinking. Um, you know, this bottle mm -hmm. has a uh, confirmed additive-free sticker on it. You know, the additive-free yeah. movement has brought a lot of new consumers into the tequila space. And it's also converted a lot of consumers in the tequila space. People who, you know, maybe in college in their early 
early 20s were drinking Don Julio, Casamigos. They're hearing through these influencers that they should be drinking additive free tequila. And the sort of the icon of additive free tequila, as is often propped up, is, is, is Fortaleza, right? This is the brand that you should try to taste all the additive free difference. Um, and yeah. I think that's a totally earned reputation. Um, but I think because Fortaleza was used to spearhead awareness around additive free agave, it's so synonymous with the with the with the phrase now that it's um it's just made it a little unattainable. And there's there's mm. plenty of other additive free brands. I, I think supposedly seventy to eighty five percent of brands have additives in them, which leaves not that many brands. But you know we still have twenty percent of brands. So go buy those instead if you're uh, looking for something a little cheaper. Yeah. So uh, funny enough, we we're filming a bourbon hunting video the other day. And my buddy, when we went to the tequila, I always look at the tequila aisle, have to. We're looking and checking it out. I'm like, okay, point out. And I'm like, damn, none of the, I, 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 in my head, I'm thinking, all these are additive tequila. There's no additive free stuff, maybe one or two brands. And my buddy pointed, he was filming for me and he goes, dude, that's my favorite of all time. He's like, there's nothing better. Guess what he pointed to? What did he point to? Casamigo. <sighs> that's funny. And I literally looked at him and I was like, are you serious? Like, no, no, no. Seriously, are you serious? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, okay. I, I'm i not trying to be that guy right now, but I promise you, you need to have some additive-free tequila. Wait till you come. So that night, we did a live stream here, uh, you know, with the setup and everything. And I was like, hey, first couple things we're trying is some additive-free tequila that you need to try. And once he tasted it, he was just like, oh, like, it, you could just see his face change. And he was like, oh, my God. It was like, I didn't know tequila was like like that. And I was like, yeah, and by the way, this one's cheaper than Casamigos that you love. You know? Isn't that crazy, too? Like, it, why would you not buy additive-free tequila? There's some that are cheaper than stuff that is putting additives. Because what's a bottle of Casamigos? At least 40 bucks? At least, right? Usually. I think Casamigos Blanco, maybe 60 bucks. I mean, it gets pretty expensive. Ooh. I think Casamigos Añejo might push uh, 80 bucks, depending on where you buy it. I mean, it's just so hyped, right? Ooh. People, it has such name brand recognition. You know, people immediately grab the bottle on the shelf. Like one Lalo, Tapatio. Those right there, just come on. Those are so good. Te tequila Ocho. Arete. How much was that Arete that you said? 20 bucks. Yeah, 20 bucks, dude. That stuff is incredible. It really is. All right. Sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm on a, I'm on a rambling. We can move on. Uh, let me finish this, and I have the only rye whiskey next. Yeah, that's 10 out of 10 good, though. And that's the, the Jack Daniels? Uh, the, the stag was 10 out of 10. Ah. This, this now that I'm moving on to. Is a Jack Daniels barrel proof uh, single barrel rye whiskey coming in at 135.7 proof. Also, the highest proof point on the table for sure. Yeah. Oh my gosh, on the nose, that smells weird, man. It's not adding up. It doesn't make sense. I've, I've mixed rye. One of my favorites is actually Old Overholt 114. Rye whiskey comes from Jim Beam. I don't even like Jim Beam, but it comes from Jim Beam, and mixing that with a soda is so damn good. 114 proof is like the sweet spot. That's probably the max I would go until today. I'm going to start mixing Stag and Coke. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that. Um, but this right here smells like a uh, – do, you know do you know those suckers that are like half caramel, half green apple? You know what I'm talking about? Have you no, seen I've never before? tried one of those. Really? That's like my wife's favorite little candy. It's a it's a sucker and literally split right down the middle, a little squiggly line, squiggly line. Half of it is actually caramel and half of it is a green apple sucker. So it's like, you know, caramel apple. Um, that's what this smells like. What do you have next? What are you pouring up next? Cascanes. I'm, just, I'm pouring Hello. the Cascanes Blanco and the, the Coke, which I'm I'm loving. It it's very, very clean. Um I think that it's a you know, I think to recommend that anyone mix their Cascanes with Coke would probably be a uh re regrettable uh recommendation. Yeah, one of these, just because it's it's a bit of a waste. But uh, I really do think that this is delicious. Uh it comes across very smooth. You know, smoothness is not always the most desirable quality when we're drinking spirits. Or if you're into spirits, right? Smoothness yeah. isn't necessarily what you want. But at forty for at forty percent ABV, this is a great tequila and it, it's really mixing well with the Coke, I think. I mean, coming off from the uh mixing it with the reposado, I think this is a great combination that I would probably rate 
nine out of ten i don't know if i would okay. ever pour it up again because i would probably save the cascana for something <laughs> else but uh it, it really comes across fantastic yeah that sounds amazing i'm gonna be honest i don't know this stuff this is so good this exactly what i was describing on the nose this you know okay you know what green jolly rancher is right sure do Absolutely. a lot of people listening probably know what green jolly ranchers are this tastes exactly that or almost artificial apple flavor that green jolly rancher flavor right when you swallow it on your finish um I, and, and this is actually out of all these still austin is just a no uh this single barrel in particular is just a no because it's not good can't get art of the spirits i'm not going to be mixing that with coke my favorite of all time love it neat as it is not going to mix that i haven't, I haven't gone jt melick yet but this so far I can actually find these 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 Jack Rye's here, Colorado. I could not. I can actually find these for like sixty five dollars, maybe less. I'd actually mix this every now and then to get this flavor profile again. And I can't imagine how good this would be with Coke. It's green apple bomb, bomb. I don't know why, but green apple bomb. Ha. Huh. I wonder if you could mix it with, uh, you know, a Sprite. I'm, I'm just trying to imagine what other sodas, mm. uh, the untapped potential, right, for specific flavors that we're tasting within these whiskeys, right? You know, if we're talking about, a, you know, the big classic Buffalo Trace cherry note, that sounds like it would mix well with a cola. Um, you know, yeah. what you're talking about, I wonder what the, uh, the you know, the best, the most culinary pairing with yeah. a, a really tasty soda would be. Yeah, you, honestly, this this kind of whole day so far has kind of motivated me to, Maybe do some shorts or some long form video content on pairing, you know, different again, like we did with the blends. That was all a joke, a jab, whatever. But actually finding what is what is something that might be better than sipping it neat. This might be better with a Coca Cola, or in my case, a Dr Pepper than sipping it neat because of the pro because of the flavor that it brings out. And I think the reason you're getting that flavor profile again is because it's so high proof 135 proof that's a lot fair enough now i'm going to oh. go to some drastically different vibes mm. I... me too actually oh yeah the jt mellick yeah 100 percent rice whiskey there's no other ingredient besides rice in this right so. now I did not know you could make whiskey out of rice maybe the uh the listeners will think that i'm too much of a novice for saying that but i, I really had no idea me neither. So the price of rice in Louisiana, or just in general, went down. This was like seven or maybe eight years ago, went down really bad. So farmers were struggling here. We're, we're one of the top five states in the country for growing rice. I think top three. But anyway, Mike Frouge, owner of JT Mellick, was like, we got to think of something to do. And he loves vodka. So he's like, I don't know. Is there a way that we can make something out of that? Because we got so much extra product. Can we make an alcohol out of this? He brought it to a bunch of conventions. He brought his green, and they were like, no, 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 you can't do it. So finally, I don't know who it was, but some person let them use. They're still, you know, they needed to make vodka. He was like, I want to try to make it. He made it, and they were like, holy crap, this is really unique and different and good and cheap to make, and we can get rid of this rice. So they made it, but while they were making it, his, uh, I don't know if his daughter or one of the friends was like, dude, you have to try to make whiskey with this too. And they ended up being the first uh, rice whiskey. So in America, the first rice whiskey. And I'm going to be honest with you. It tastes a lot like, uh, I would say, like the Weller lineup, that Weller full proof. It reminds me of a weeded bourbon. That's what this tastes like. It doesn't taste like a single malt or a Japanese whiskey, anything like that. It really tastes very bourbon forward. I love it. But um, yeah, so how cool is that, you know? The price of rice is down. What the hell am I going to do with all this extra product? I'm going to make alcohol with it. It sounds like a very Louisiana thing to do, you know? <laughs> That's fantastic. I mean, I just love, you know, crossing genres and uh, creating new things yeah. for people. You know, with tequila, it's always made from blue weber agave, which, you know, people yes. like, and that's cool. But, uh, you know, with whiskey and with a lot of other spirits, um, you know, the variety is is limitless. You know, sometimes I'm, I'm envious of, uh, you know, gin fans where you can toss anything in mm. as a botanical. I mean, sometimes I'll read about a gin made with, like, you know, oyster shells and, you know, what have you, right? The, the, the possibilities are limitless. And whether or not you necessarily taste the oyster shells and the final product is, you know, up to the, uh, to the drinker, but just to have that in the still yeah. and to uh, talk about those tasting notes and imagine the influences is, uh, is pretty wild in and of itself. Yeah, definitely. All right. What is this? What is, is that? Corn? 
This is not a That's tequila. A I thought that I would shake it up a little bit with a couple Ooh. of liqueurs that I'm a very big fan of. Now, this is okay. Nixta Licor de Alote. This is made in Mexico. The brand that makes this, they do something called Absolo Corn Whiskey, which is a 43% ABV whiskey made with corn. Um, this is a liqueur that they produce made from that corn whiskey. Um, it's mixed with corn, and uh, it's added with cane sugar i believe so oh, this is yeah. a uh, literally a corny liqueur i mean just look at this bottle it, it's pretty hard if you were on the liquor store shelf and you just saw this giant glass it's hard not to buy yeah it's pretty wild now obviously this does not mix well with a lot of things you're not going to splash this yeah. into your margarita necessarily if you're buying this you are like making a signature nixta corn cocktail um i've seen a popular one with coffee in particular but i think you know, exploring the possibilities, I thought it would be interesting to mix this with Coca Cola and see what the yeah. uh, where the results take us. Now, their regular do they sell their regular whiskey? Yeah, I have a bottle at home, Absolo. It's a <laughs> it's a square bro bottle. It almost looks like a brick, actually. It's a it's dark red. Um, it's pretty good. It's uh definitely uh the corn flavor is strong with it. Yeah. I mean, it uh it almost tastes the whiskey itself almost tastes like a li liqueur. I would say it has a a sort of cognac mm. note. Um, it's not so high ABV. The uh the flavors of the you know sort of the um. That, that really, you know, vegetal corn note, uh, it really wafts up pretty strong. And you, you get it in the liqueur as well. Yeah. Is that – so I, what's the price on their that right there that you have? This, like, 40 bucks, I think. Okay. Yeah. I love that bottle. Yeah. Look at that. And I'm going to taste the, the JT Mellick and Dr. Pepper. Wow. This almost tastes like a, uh, like a, not root beer, but it, yeah, I guess root beer float, like a soda float or whatever. For whatever reason, this is what I was getting initially. So you don't taste any of the whiskey at all uh, on the initial and on the finish. However, on the finish, what's, what, what I'm getting now is like a vanilla note, like a vanilla ice cream note. This is really good. I think after we uh, we film up today, I'm going to go and pour a proper uh, JT Mellick and Dr. Pepper and see if I'm still getting that. But I'm th that's right now. It tastes like a root beer float almost. It's great. Rice and Coca-Cola. Who would have thought? Mm. Mm. This um, Nixta liqueur and Coca-Cola combo is... Uh... An unwieldy beast. I don't know if I've ever really tasted something quite like this. Um, definitely okay. a bit of a, a vanilla flavor. I think it's just, you know, mixing a straight liqueur with Coca-Cola is uh, two very sweet products combined yeah. into one. You know, when you're pouring in your tequila, no matter what quantity, right, it's going to sort of even out the ratio a little bit. Um, this is like a uh, a molasses almost, a corn molasses, oh, wow. if you were. Um I don't know if I would mix this again. I think there are better applications yeah. for the Nixta corn liqueur. To give this a rating would be, I think, unfair because it's a uh, kind of blasphemous. Um, yeah. But uh, <laughs> it's a, it's an interesting one. I mean, I can even look at it. And it's almost uh, taking on the the viscous uh, sort of look of a liqueur, which is maybe Ooh. not what you want to see from your Coca Cola. Yeah. Well, I need to go back and rate. Thank you for saying that, Jack mm -hmm. Daniels, uh, single barrel pour fry, and Dr Pepper. I'm going to give that a 9.5 out of 10. Um, very good. A lot of apple. You have to like apple. Enjoy that one. JT Mellick. It's really weird because these all these blue labels of JT Mellick are actually single barrel picks. Um, and they actually are very different from each other. A lot of them will sip really hot, but great. A lot of them will sip underproof, and a lot of them are just like, what the hell is this? Still a consistent profile, but you know, you know what I mean. There's dif uh, differentiaries. I don't even know. Is that a word? My gosh, people in the comments, is that differentiaries? Is that a word? Let me know. But this one in particular might just be this barrel brings out this vanilla ice cream note on it that I really freaking love, o almost as much, if not more, than this cotton candy note that the stag brings out. So before before ten of glass, I would give the uh, before ten of coke. I would give this a eight. Um, now that it's, yeah, I would give it a nine point four. Let's go nine point four. It's fantastic. Fair enough. Yeah, I should try that yeah. out myself.
It's so good, man. So, so good. Now, last but not least, as we're wrapping up here, I have another liqueur. This one I think will match better with Coca-Cola. This is Ancho Reyes. So, Nixa was made with corn. This is made with Ancho chilies, which are dried poblano peppers. If you know poblano Ooh. peppers, um, very popular in Tex-Mex cuisine, if you're from the United States. Um, not too spicy. When they're dried, they take on that sort of roasty, toasty flavor. Um, this is one of my favorite liqueurs. You know, the, the spicy margarita and the many spicy variations of different tequila cocktails have taken off like wildfire over the past few yeah. years. And, you know, a handful of, uh, you know, pepper-infused tequilas have taken advantage of the, uh, the zeitgeist. This is, I think, the definitive liqueur for mixing up those kinds of cocktails. Um, bold, smoky. It's 40% ABV which is pretty rare for a liqueur. Um, yeah, it is. And I think it's just fantastic. I'm, I'm a big fan of this. I'm, I'm curious to see how it mixes with, you know, Coca-Cola to make sort of a, a spicy concoction. Yeah, for sure. That is neat, man. Man, yeah. I, this was fun. I, I really enjoyed doing this, and I think it would be cool, um, you know, maybe in the next four or five, I don't know, episodes – Let's do this again, but with Sprite, you know, let's do it with a different soda that time and bring out maybe some different whiskeys or the same whiskey, different tequila or the same tequila. I don't know, but um, I hope you guys are enjoying this episode so far. I've really been, you know, this was kind of a, a, a free session. We're just like, hey, grab some Coca-Cola, grab some tequila. I'm going to grab some whiskey. I'm going to grab some Dr. Pepper. Let's put it together and see what today's episode looks like. This is good. Yeah, this combination of Coke and Ancho Reyes is, is uh, also pretty wild. I maybe should know better than to just mix straight liqueurs <laughs> and Coca-Cola. Um, I think it's it, you take the sip in the first half, you know, on the palate, on the aroma, yeah. it's pure Coca-Cola. And then on the finish, the spicy, the pepper, it, it mm. lingers. It, it, it hits you. It's uh, it's almost like you mentioned before the... Uh, the, the candies that are half caramel and half uh, green yeah. apple. This is half Coca-Cola in the front and then half pure spicy liqueur on the end, which is uh, not wow. something I've really ever tasted before. <laughs> Probably wouldn't work well served at a bar, but it's definitely an interesting yeah. sort of double shot experience. Believe it or not, since I was a child, so Tabasco, I would argue the largest, if not one of the largest hot sauce companies in the world, is made 25 minutes from the house I'm in right now. Um and it's like this beautiful property you can go visit tour the factory since i was a kid i i remember drinking tabasco and coca-cola i don't know if they, they sell that product but at at the i don't I almost said distillery at the factory itself you can pour from a coca-cola fountain it's this tabasco coca-cola collaboration and i remember actually loving it because you get that spicy tickle on the back of your throat but you still get that sweetness of the coca-cola and now it makes sense why I actually like some of the um, tequila or vodka hot shots, you know, where there's got some spice to it. Yeah, maybe next time we should bring a little Coca-Cola Tabasco whiskey collab. I know mm. that there's a uh, a whiskey finished in Tabasco barrels, but that's a, a beast of its tickle. Have you have you tried it? I have. Tarot, because the whiskey itself uh, before finished in Tabasco is no good, but in Tabasco it just kind of. It's a fun shot. We enjoyed, you know, taking a shot together and just because it's not something you would ever sip. So it's a fun shot. Yeah. Very nice. Well, I think we are just out of time. Um, I yeah. had a lot of fun with this episode. I wasn't sure what to expect. Um, definitely on the back ends, the combinations got a little more outlandish, at least for me. Um, but, you know, I'm here for it. I think it's fun to just explore the possibilities when you're talking about something like Coca Cola and everything it can mix with, you know, something that so many people have in their homes that could mix with so many other things that they have in their homes it's uh you know it's just it's a uh, it's a lot of fun yeah absolutely this was a great episode um i can't wait for the next one we have a couple of guests uh scheduled for you guys and of course we're going to bring as many guests as possible but i really do hope you enjoy you know some of these episodes just us because that's what it's all about spirit of the spirits baby we talk everything in the spirits community that we do. If you want to find more written content, you can check us out on BottleRaiders.com or on Instagram, also Bottle Raiders. Uh, I believe Canon has a YouTube channel as well. That's how I introduce it every week. 
every week, baby. Yes, I do. Whiskier, W-I-S-K-E-Y-E-R. Whiskier for more long-form bourbon hunting videos, reviews. We have one coming out really soon. Costco Whiskey, what's up? Um, but yeah, overall, thank you guys for watching Spirit of the Spirits. Go ahead and subscribe here. Turn those notifications on so you get notified every week. Once a week, your episode will come out. And we'll see you in the very next podcast. All right. Have a good one, everyone.